microservices has emerged as the desired architecture for modern day application. They're flexible because you can divide your monolithic application into smaller module or components, and you can design, develop, and deploy these components independently. They are scalable because you can run multiple instances of these components, uh, multiple instances of these component as desired in a cluster, right? But this flexibility and scalability comes at a cost of deployment complexity. Imagine that you have these components with their dependency, and if they happens to run on same host, then these dependency might conflict with each other. Well, the answer is run everything in containers. Container is this nice construct where you pack your dependency as well as your component and deploy them together in an isolation in such a way that even if two containers land up on the same host, they will not conflict with each other. But I'm sure those who have enough, played enough with containers would have realized that container themselves are not enough, especially when you're planning to deploy them in production. One, they are mortal, so they die. You need a system that can monitor them continuously and can schedule them if they die. Second, each container consumes certain amount of system resources, such as CPU, memory, and disk. You need a system that can do resource management for these containers. And finally, services that are running in these containers needs to be able to talk to each other or find each other. So you need some kind of service management. And this is where DCOS comes in. DCOS is this container orchestration platform which has Mesos at its core, and it, with, along with its framework, such as Marathon, can do container scheduling and resource management. It also provides service management through service discovery and load balancing, which is also the topic for my talk today, and we'll go deep in that. But before we take a specific DCOS networking stack, we want to understand what are the challenges in container networking. Say you have container orchestration layer running with bunch of containers. The very first challenge is to provide connectivity to these containers. And these containers are different because they are not hosts or they are not VMs, right? Second, once you resolve that challenge of connectivity, you would want the services that are running in these containers to be able to talk to each other. So you need service discovery. And now imagine, as I said, these containers keep dying and keep rescheduling on different hosts. So, so a service discovery mechanism should be able to update and reflect those changes in the cluster. And finally, you would want your container to have multiple instances and sitting behind our load balancer. And load balancer would have exactly the same challenge as service discovery. It needs to reflect the dying and coming up of these containers in a cluster in a dynamic fashion. So today, let's bring us to our talk today. So we will go through each of these topics in much detail. But before we go, there, I want to give you a high-level view of how these different components in DCS network stack fits together to complete container networking. So imagine that you have a master and bunch of Mesos agents. You could either use Docker runtime to launch Docker containers, or you can use something called universal container runtime, which can run both Docker containers as well as Mesos containers. UCR has, has a native support for something called CNI, which is Container Networking Interface, and we'll, we'll see what it is in coming slide. But UCR, CNI gives this ability where a, a plugging of a third-party network becomes really easy. Docker, on the other hand, uses something called CNM, Container Network Model. So this provides the connectivity. Now, service discovery is done through networking component called Spartan and Mesos DNS. Spartan is this component that runs on all the agents as well as master in a distributed fashion. And we will see the benefit that it gives us being distributed. And they gossip around to get the global state of the cluster. Similarly, load balancing is achieved through a component called Minutemen. Again, like Spartan, it also runs on all the agents as well as on the master. And they gossip around to get the complete global state of the cluster. Just keep this picture in mind when we are focusing on each individual component. This will give you a context as where this particular component fits in the entire picture. So let's start our journey. 
So the first one is container networking interface. It is something proposed by core OS and now adopted by CNCF organization body. Um, UCR, as I said earlier, has a native support for um, CNI. The way it works is there is a network CNI isolator in Mesos, which is responsible for creating network namespace. And then it hands over this network namespace to plugin, which is a CNI plugin. And the CNI plugin is, the, is responsible for connecting the container to the host network or any network. So each CNI plugin comes with a configuration, or you can say each virtual network that is created in container networking comes with a configuration, which is nothing but a JSON configuration with a bunch of key value pair um, specific to a particular plugin. But it also has two important fields. One, the name of the network, which defines what virtual network will be called. And the second is the type of plugin. So there are different type of plugins, like host plugin, bridge plugin, IPAM, uh, port mapper plugin, right? And this configuration sits on each agent in DCOS cluster at a, along, with the conf, along with the plugin at a predefined um, location. Now, when the framework wants to launch a task on a particular virtual network, it has to fill in network info in Mesos protobuf. The thing that it has to fill is the name of the virtual network, and that's why name is very important in the configuration. So let's say such a task is triggered and it is launched on a particular agent, the agent will go ahead and create the network namespace along with the rest of the container um, isolation and then it will take that network namespace, give it to plugin. In this particular example, it is bridge plugin because the type in the configuration is bridge. And the bridge plugin will then make sure that this container is connected to the host network, right? That's how the CNI machinery is working in DCOS. Now, one of that implementation of that CNI is IP per container. When we say IP per container, a container may have IP, but it, it, it may not be routable. Like for example, in a bridge setup where everything comes to the host and then port map to the container network, right? But when we say IP per container, these are routable IP address. You can access a container through an IP address. And let's see how it is achieved. So it is, it is dependent on Mesos module plus CNI, as I said, it, it uses bridge CNI plugin. And then it, is, it uses, for encapsulation, it uses something called uh, VXLAN, which is, which is very much in, in Linux kernel. The way you dip, configure any overlay in DCOS is through config.tml. I'm sure those who have launched DCOS cluster would have encountered config.yml. So it is like a JSON which, or a YAML file, which is a key value pair which defines your cluster. This, the value that you see on the screen is the default, default uh, overlay network, um, which comes out of the box. You don't have to do it, but you can change this configuration to change either the subnet for the overlay um, and uh, uh, or any other any other setting, but you can also add multiple overlays. Uh, one thing I I didn't mention here how overlay is connected to IP per network IP per container. So the IP that you get. Okay, let me let me pause myself here and I, I'll explain how IP per network is con uh, is connected to overlay. But imagine there's an overlay network, and I will tell the reasoning behind why we need an overlay network, or it will become more clear in coming slides. So at a high level. Uh, there is an overlay Mesos module that is running on master as well as on all the agents. So at a boot up time, the module that is running on the agents register with the master. As part of this registration, master takes this subnet configuration and break down the subnet into equal chunks of subnet. So this is done statically at the time of registration. And it hands over these chunks to each individual agent now, the, there's a helper module that is running on each agent called Navstar, which continuously polls local agent state, right, for overlay. As soon as it gets the overlay configuration, it routes the map, it, it, it um, configures the route in the kernel, right, for a particular overlay. And it also informs other neighboring Navstar about this configuration, and that's how each Navstar is able to do a global connectivity of this overlay. Now, when Marathon wants to launch a task, it picks up one of the agent, and the task will have an IP address that is routable, right? 
This light is the one that gives you the connectivity between overlay and IP per container. So imagine that container has an IP address. If, and this subnet will definitely be different from the host one, right? So you need some kind of a encapsulation on the host network to be able to route the traffic. So imagine that uh, container once wants to talk to container two, it will send a packet and the routing entries on, on agent one will make sure that all the packets go to VTAP one VTAP1 has this VXLAN encapsulation. It will encapsulate and send it to the destination VTAP2. Destination VTAP2 will do a decapsulation, and that's how the inner packet, which is actually the packet destined to container 2, will reach there. So that's why we need overlay and how overlay is connected with IP per container. Now, service discovery is through Spartan and Mesos DNS. Both of them are open source project. Uh, both of them, monitors the tasks that are getting launched in the container and create appropriate SRV and A records for service discovery. At a high level, the way it works is there is both Mesos DNS and Spartan. Both of these components are running on master and they pull master state. And to, to see if there is any new task that has come in and create new A records on SRV records or to see if there is some task that has died and you need to remove those records from DNS. Spartan also communicate this information to all the other Spartan, neighboring Spartans which are running on the agents. And that's how each of the agent gets the entire DNS record for the, for the whole cluster. The benefit of that is if there is a task that is running on a particular agent and it issues a query, that query is locally intercepted by Spartan and respond, right? So the DNS, as long as it is within the cluster, like the DNS and uh, address is such that it can be resolved within the cluster, the DNS query doesn't leave even the agent, which gives a, a lot of scalability. So Spartan is really this D distributed DNS proxy, which reduces the latency uh, along with being fact that it is running on each agent, it also does something clever which is called dual dispatch. And we will see how dual dispatch helps in speeding up the DNS resolution. And then finally, it also support uh, upstream, configuring upstream per domain. So you can have .com uh, TLD going towards one upstream and .org TLD going to another upstream. So coming to dual dispatch. Dual dispatch is this optimization pattern. So usually, if you know, if you have dealt with DNS, the way the DNS resolution works is uh, one of, the system will pick one of the upstream and send the DNS query to that upstream. It will wait for the DNS query to fail or pass. And when the timeout happens, it picks up another upstream and sends it. So that's, that can kind of add latency to the DNS resolution. What Spartan does, whenever there's a query from a Mesos agent, it picks up two upstreams and do a dual dispatch. It simultaneously send queries to both the upstreams. Then one of the upstream would respond, whichever it is, responds first. It sends that response to the, to the task that was querying it. And the second response that comes in, it just note down the matrix for that upstream so that in future, if it has to pick the upstream, it will kind of deny, it will not pick up that particular upstream because it was slow last time, right? Now, to give you a picture how it all fits, let's say we have a cluster. We have a bunch of masters and, and agent nodes that are running, um, and we have an upstream. So if there is a task that queries, as I said earlier, that only queries for the local DNS, then that DNS resolution happens locally on that particular agent. If there is something which is external to the cluster, such as .com kind of a uh, record, then Spartan will send it to the upstream and all dot .mesos goes to the Mesos DNS. That's how the, the service discovery happens in DCOS. Now coming to load balancing. Load balancing is done through Minuteman and Marathon LB. Minuteman is this uh, layer four load balancer. It is based on TCP and it uses something which is there in Linux kernel, the, the load LVS, which is load balancer virtual server. And it, uh, so the, so the benefit of that is the entire uh, data plane is inside the kernel. And Minutemen only uh, do the control plane, handling of the control plane. The way you use WIP in DCOS is through this app definition. Uh, those who have interacted with Marathon, you need to submit this app definition in order to launch your task, right? So this is a particular example, and it's through label. So you need to specify a label called WIP. 
along with the name of the VIP. So these are named VIP, but you can also use something called IP VIP, where you can directly give the IP address and the port. If you give name, that name is translated to the actual VIP, which is at the bottom of the screen. So if you give a web server, then it will become web server dot marathon l 4 lb this DCOS directory. At a high level, let's say marathon uh, request a task to be launched with a label foo.5000. Foo is the name VIP. Master will pick up, say, one of the agent, agent one, to launch this task. Then this task launch, but the actual port the task is running on is, say, 6789. Now, Minuteman that is locally running on this agent where the task was launched is continuously polled for a state, like every two seconds. And then it gets, as soon as the task is launched, it gets this mapping between whip colon port to the actual port of that task. Then what it does is it, it gossip this information to the entire cluster through other neighboring Minutemen. All the Minutemen along with master or agent, wherever they are running, what they will do, they will pick an IP independently, right? The reason why an IP address is not communicated because if you imagine IP address is a state, so if, if, if they have to communicate IP address instead of the name, then there might be a conflict. Uh, between two minutes man picking up the same IP address. So they, they just communicate that, hey, there's a name foo, um, a, a task with a name whip foo was launched on a particular agent, and each Minuteman choose their own IP address. Then Minuteman uh, creates a local A record to in Spartan. Each Minuteman will do that, so all Spartan will have this A record mapping the whip to an actual IP. It also programs the kernel. Um, with the appropriate uh, front end and the back end. So the IP that is picked for this particular web, in this case it is 1234, 5000, and the back end is the actual server IP with the port. So now, let's say when the task two uh, wants to connect to task one through load balanced web, it will query the local Spartan with, with, the, with the DNS entry. Spartan would give the local IP address that was picked by Minuteman, and then, it will try to do connect, which will be intercepted by the kernel locally on this agent, but ultimately because the IPBS entry has the backend information, it will connect to the task one that is connect, running on agent one. That's how task two is able to connect to task one. Now coming to Marathon LB, Marathon LB is something that is layer seven load balancer. So uh, when we were talking about Minuteman, it was just layer four, but lo uh, ma ma Marathon is layer seven and it is a wrapper around HA proxy. It, the way it works is, uh, at a high level, there is a concept called public agent. Public agents are those agents which, say, have an IP address or an interface which is exposed to the outside of the cluster. So that's why you, those agents are public agents. So Marathon LB, say, running on a public agent, it continuously listens on Marathon event bus for any new task, right? And as soon as... Um, a new task is launched or it dies, it updates the HA proxy configuration internally. Then let's say when an external client is trying to connect to this HA proxy, it load balances on the task. And that's how you expose your internal running services to outside the cluster. It works pretty much the same way as Minuteman web. There's a label on in the app definition. There are like tons of label if you've seen that repo, Marathon LB repo, uh, but the two of, like in this example are of most important. One is the external which defines that you are exposing this um, service externally and then what DNS it should be having. Okay, that brings up to the things that we are currently working on. So very first thing that you would see in future is, is the IPv6 support in the DCS networking stack. Then there is something called uh, CNI spec versions. So right now we support 0.2.0. We want to support 0.3. Going forward, we want to support 0.3.0. One of the main feature in 0.3 is service chaining. So those of you who have uh, some experience with the CNI would know that this many a times you need different services and by service here, I mean like load balancing service, DNS service, or IP connectivity is also service. There's an IPM service, there's a port mapper service. So these are various services. Today in spec 2.0, you really cannot uh, 
uh, mix and match these services in a way that, in a pluggable way. But with 0 0.3, it has a service chaining which will allow you to pick any of these different uh, services and create a chain of these services. So it can dynamically call different virtual network can have different services running for the same functionality. So that's pretty powerful. And then uh, today in DCOS, if you want to use certain CNI plugin, the steps are very manual. You have to deploy the plugin as well as the configuration manually on each agent. We want to take it out and make it more um, uh, streamlined. And so we are working on something called CNI configuration service, which will have an effect of uh, like clicking few buttons on the UI and your CNI plugin is ready to be used in a network. And then there is a demand for having multi-tenancy in network, like certain users or certain organizations should not be allowed to launch containers or certain networks. So some kind of uh, multi-tenancy. So we are working on something called authorization and authentication with network and also uh, a, a security policy. Now security policy, when we talk about security policy, it's at two layers. One is per virtual network, like whether a virtual network should be allowed to communicate with another virtual network, what kind of isolation we need among virtual networks. And then within a virtual network, there are ACS, like what port and IP should be allowed to connect to what port and so This will give us the flexibility of say, which services are allowed to connect to which all services. So we are working on that. And finally, the big picture that we started our journey from. That also concludes my talk for today. Any questions? Mostly I've seen uh, people using Calico. Pardon me? I didn't get it. What, not? Weave network, no, no, no. I've, mostly I've heard about Calico, but maybe. Yeah, uh, actually when you say solution, you also need to think about what you need from solution. Like what kind of functionality you are expecting from a solution. Yeah, then it's fine, then it's fine. But uh, there are uh, virtual networks that provide uh, more functionality. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I, I, could you repeat that question? Right, right, so, so it's, it, it doesn't run on every slave, it just runs on the public slaves that you have, right? And you, depending on uh, requirement, you, so each marathon LB instance is an HA proxy instance, right? So in certain cases, uh, just, just to give you an example, let's say you want to have an HA proxy for your HTTP traffic and you want to have a, a HA proxy for HTTPS traffic, right? In that case, you may want to run Marathon, two instances of Marathon LB on two public slaves. So it really depends how, what functionality you need from HA proxy and that's define how many instances of Marathon LB you would like to use. Minuteman is heavily dependent on the meso state. So that part, uh, so if you are saying, it, can it be run without DCOS? Yes, it can be. So it is independent of DCOS, but it is dependent on mesos for its state. Estimate, um, probably by the end of this year. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah.
No, not currently no. They all have, uh, so all the records that are created today have a default time to limit as five seconds. But, uh, Right. Okay, that's not TTL. So that's something uh, how fast the system is reacting to a change. That depends on the polling period. So the polling period for DNS is 30 seconds, right? Uh, so if, if, if let's say some task came in when we last polled, right? So you can expect that entry to be there after 30 seconds, right? But that is not TTL. TTL is like, if you have a cache sitting somewhere, how long it should keep that TNS before refreshing it again, right? Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Because he says, you know, it's proxy, but it's also probably a server. That's true. That's a good point. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes, yes, so that's good. That's a good point, so um, I, I don't know your name, but, but he made a good point. So I, I was telling that Spartan is a DNS proxy, but Spartan is DNS proxy as well as a resolver. So there is a resolver sitting inside this Spartan that do DNS resolution, and that's how the local DNS queries are resolved by Spartan. Right. Any other question? Anything which was not clear? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. So in the config.tml, yeah, so the question is, uh, I said in an overlay that master statically divides the subnet into um, agents equally, right? He's asking, then how do you support adding new agents, right? Because in DCOS, you can add new agents, would they get because the subnet would have already be divided, how would you get new subnet, right? New agent will get any subnet. Uh, the thing is, the thing that, uh, that is part of config.yml is also the prefix of each subnet that the agent is supposed to get. That defines how many slices we will be cutting from the global subnet. So let me, I don't know if it is easy for me to jump to that slide. Yeah, so if you see, there's a third parameter called prefix, which is after name subnet. So subnet, when you say it's a whole subnet, the, the subnet for the entire DCS cluster, but then there is a prefix parameter which decide the slices out of the subnet. So master will just take this um, prefix 26 and will divide the entire subnet into slash 26 networks. And then the operator has to make sure that the number of agents, num so this subnet should be big enough that it is, a it is able to be given to all the agents, right? If, if number of agent increases, then these, these entries have to be modified. Anything else? Yes. Right. Right, right. Uh, yeah, so good point and, uh, and, uh, and a good eye as well. So I mentioned that uh, CNI is the one that is invoking a CNI plugin and that is only possible with UCR. Right. But Docker, on the other hand, can have this IP per container, and we support that in DCS. So how it is working uh, when Docker doesn't support CNI, right? The way we do it is custom for this particular case because it is supported out of box from DCS. So we take the path of something called user network in Docker. So we create a user network using the CNI plugin and launch the Docker container on top of that. So Docker is able to launch containers if you can pre-create a network for Docker, right, and add into the Docker network list. So we do that uh, in the Mesos module. When, when somebody configures an overlay, we go ahead and create appropriate Docker networks and attach 
a Docker container on that. So that's how it is working. Yeah. Anything? Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs>